Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I thought we'd see if we can get on with this project. This is something I've not touched for a while as well and it's another project that I want to kind of get finished soon and um, kind of like get boxed off. Um, if you remember correctly, if you remember previously on this, this is a Rage I bought really really cheap from a car boot sale for spares really. Uh, but I thought it, cause it's something a little bit more unusual. Um, it's like a table side radio, but instead of being a valve set, this is um, a very early transistor set. Um, and the cabinet was in a pretty shocking state. And if you remember in the previous video to this, um, I re veneered um, the cabinet. And that's basically where this has been left. So, what I thought we'd do in this video is see if we can get this cabinet, um, if not completely finished, at least a little bit further on than it is now. And um, in the next, like, couple of videos or you know a video again after this and um, we'll see if we can get this thing completely finished and looking um, looking as good as it did when it um, came out of the factory um, so right without further ado I'll get the camera reset so we can look at this a little bit better and just looking at me as well and um, we'll crack on with this so back in a sec right okay that's a better shot you can actually see what we're doing now right, the first thing we're really going to need to do to this is basically darken down this um, new veneer the thing is when these were made the, the basically they put the veneer on and then the lacquer that they put on would actually have a pigment in it so it darkened down the color um, the lacquer that I'm using nowadays is just a clear lacquer uh, it doesn't really do that so we basically we need to darken this down before we actually um, apply a lacquer to it and what I'm going to use is um, this is Indian rosewood um, I've had this for years I'm actually kind of getting to the end of it now I will have to see if I can still get some more I'm hoping to still actually make this um, the collar on um, it's really really good stuff this right let me get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing that's better and all we're going to use to apply it is some um, kitchen paper. I'll get a uh, basically, I'll get a wad of kitchen paper and fold it into a pad like that. We'll get the uh, we'll get the wood die open. basically and get some of that onto the paper towel and we just apply it to the timber like this look at that now it, so it soaks in really quite nicely with the uh, into the paper towel so it goes quite a long way but don't let it run dry when you start feeling it run dry you just need to go and get some more some more on like that and then carry on and try and work with the grain rather than against the grain you can see I'm rubbing basically with the actual um, grain of the wood there we go Make sure you get a nice even coverage as well, because it will um, it will help in the in the future. There we go. That's basically the top done. It's really that simple. It's just a case of carrying on over the whole cabinet doing that. That's the biggest part there. You can see the only piece of the original actual veneer that we could save there. We'll get another little bit of a. Uh, this on here and we'll, we'll just go back over because this will just help that um, a piece of original veneer which still has a bit of the original finish on it well not really we did scrape the original finish off but the dye has soaked somewhat into the um, veneer so we'll just try and tone it in a little bit like that do the same with this bottom piece here Anyway, you can get the idea. Uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, just pause the video and I'll finish just doing the rest of this cabinet and we'll come back 
when I've actually finished doing um, the other little bits. We might, some of them might be a little bit fiddly, but um, I'll get them done and we'll come uh, right back. So back in a sec. Right, and there we go. That's basically the um, the cabinet recolored. As you can see, I've done all sides on the top and the bottom, and that's blended in quite nicely between the two. So that's the only piece of the uh, original veneer there. All the other veneer on this cabinet's been replaced. Done that side there, down there, coloured the sides in, coloured that bottom piece in there. So that basically just needs to sit off and let dry for a while. And while we're doing that, I'll turn on to the um, next piece that I want to sort out, which is these. Now this is the um, bright work which would go um, around the, the speaker cloth on the radio and this should be a nice shiny kind of like gold colour and as you can see it's uh, it's pretty horrible. We'll get you zoomed in a bit so you, oops no in. We'll get you zoomed in a bit so you can see a bit better. As you can see it looks like it's really tarnished. It's not looking um, not looking at its best and these really need to go back on because the radio won't look right uh, without them. Um, can't really get a modern replacement for this stuff. Um, it's one of these things if it's missing on the radio the radio is never really going to look right but um, if you have got it and it's looking bad like this you can bring it back round. What I'm going to do use for that is one of these. This is just a um, a Brillo pad basically just a, um, a cleaning pad you'd use and we're going to try it dry first because I've, I've had quite a bit of luck actually doing this using it dry and all we do is start rubbing. You've got to be super super careful because um, if you're not um, you're going to bend this out of shape and if you bend it out of shape or you kink it you're never going to get it perfect it's always going to look a little bit manky but basically just very very gently keep rubbing it with the uh, with the steel wool because that's essentially all this is it's just steel wool and I think you can see probably on camera there you can see what's happening there you can see all the um, all the tarnish is basically coming off it and it's coming back to a nice shiny a nice shiny gold colour. Now it depends how much you want to go into this. Um, some people like a bit of patina um, left on there. This was looking really really manky so I'm going to make it look quite shiny. But as you know you can rub a little bit and just bring a little bit of the shine back or you can really go to town and really buff it to a really high gold polish. Anyway I'll finish off um, just do a little bit more on this one so you can um, you can kind of see the uh, you know if you were to just rub it a little bit like that you can see you've got a little bit of the shine coming back through or you can really go to town on it so you have to be careful you're not going to um, accidentally kink or bend this they are quite fragile but you can like I say you can really go to town on it like that and bring a real bring a real shine um, back to it. Anyway I'll finish off just um, cleaning these up and we'll come back when I've um, when I've done that so back in a sec. Right okay there we go um, as you can see these have sh those have shone up quite nicely. I've also got the um, bright work off the dial there. The, I think you saw me clean that up in a um, previous video on this but I've just given it a quick uh, a quick go around because there were a couple of little marks like red marks of paint or something on the outside of it I managed to get them off. The thing is with these if we leave these like this uh, basically they'll start going dull and tarnishing again. Uh, what we need to do is put a, uh, a lacquer uh, basically a clear lacquer on these and it'll protect them and it'll keep them looking shiny like this for um, the considerable future I mean, they will eventually um, dull off like they had done them originally because these would have had a, a lacquer on them originally so what we'll do now is we'll take these and indeed um, the cabinet itself and we'll give these a blow over with a lacquer then we can let that set off and uh, we'll come back when we've actually got these um, all blown over and um, 
ready for uh, reassembly and then we'll get on to the next um, the next part of the process so uh, back in a sec right okay here we are in the summer house and uh, this is what we're going to use this is just a clear um, car lacquer four quid from the local um, car supply car first place and I have already been um, shaking this for a little bit of time and basically all it's a case of doing is now this can's uh sorry uh, folks just bear with me a second I've just got to sort this um, sort this can out sorry about that folks brand new can in a faulty um, faulty cap but uh just pinched the cap off another one so hopefully we can try this again that's better and it's literally just the case now covering the cabinet with a nice clear you got a decent coat as well because um, you want a nice shine to it turn that get that side there There we are. You don't want to basically lay it on too thick that you get um, spills or runs, but you still want a nice, a nice coverage. Just sit that at the back to go off a little bit, and we'll bring in. The other bits that we want to coat as well and these will just get a, a, a gentle blow over at the same time so this will just prevent them from uh, starting to tarnish again it will keep that nice brass color for a little bit longer well, hopefully you know many years and that's basically it so all we need to do now is let these dry off and we can get on to the next part of the process so um, we'll get back to the work, we'll let these dry off and then we'll get back to the um, workshop so back in a sec. Right well we're back in the workshop as you can see the cabinets come out pretty decent actually um, as of the um, trim pieces so these, those will basically go back on the cabinet when we're finished like that the one on there and one goes on there like that um, but before we can actually fit them on and this is the next thing we need to do is we need to sort out the dial cloth that actually goes around there and I'm hoping we can actually salvage the original cloth for this so uh, I'll get this lot out of the way and we'll um, take a quick look at this um, dial cloth and see what we can do with it right Okay, here we have the um, original dial cloth that we took off the radio, and as you can see, it is actually all fairly complete. Um, we've got a little bit of damage there, which we'll need to repair. Um, if you can see from where the actual dial used to be there, hopefully this is going to come out. Let me see if I can zoom you in a little bit, because it looks like a little bit washed out from here. There, that makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, as you can see from here, um, it's pretty filthy in places, especially like round here, where it's where hands and things have touched it over time. So basically what we need to do is see if we can clean this, get it as clean as we can, and then we can have a look at doing a little bit of a repair there. Where I mean, it's not gone through, but it's on basically the speaker where something has bashed into the speaker and torn it. But we think I think we can um, probably salvage that. What I'll do first is we'll just have a look at seeing if we can um, get this grime off it. And I'm going to use one of my favourite things. This is uh, this elbow elbow grease, um, all purpose all purpose degreaser. This is really really good for basically cleaning a lot of things. So we will need that, and we will also grab um, grab a toothbrush. And basically, it's just a case of applying a little bit of the uh, 
elbow grease, giving it a second. Basically working it in with the um, toothbrush. I think you can see uh, what's happening already there. And then we get a little bit of kitchen paper. Dab it off. You can see the dirt starts basically lifting the dirt. So you can see the dirt starts coming off. So I won't bore you with me um, doing this entire thing, but you, you can basically get the idea of how uh, how this can be cleaned with add a little bit of the um, elbow grease. Just let it sit there, and that'll start help lifting this dirt. I mean, you can use other detergents. It's just a case of whatever you found that works. So we'll let that sit for a little bit. Go in with the toothbrush. And the toothbrush basically just helps to um, agitate it and get the dirt lifted up as you can see in that section there and like I said we'll go in with a cloth just wipe you can see there it basically brings all the um, it brings all the muck off but it's not actually bringing the printing the printing off if you look at that there that's the um, bit that was covered for all that time and then you look at that bit there that we've just cleaned I think you can get an idea of um, you know, what we're going to end up with it looking like so I'll carry on and I'll do the rest of this and then we'll uh, we'll come back and we'll have a look at repairing that uh, little uh, bit of damage on the back of the material so uh, back in a sec right okay there it is finished now I've not gone completely perfect on it in fact this material I found out is fairly weak because as I was cleaning it I actually did tear it again I've made a tear like that in it but don't worry about that I'm going to show you how to fix that uh, right now but I'm reasonably pleased with that it's like I say, it's not perfect but at least it's not got the big grimy grimy spots it had on um, previously you know it will look quite presentable when it's back on the radio so what we need to do now is look at actually repairing this damage here so I'll just go and get some bits for us to do that and there's another little bit of a hole I think it was up at, yeah just right there we're going to need to have to do something about that as well so uh, again I'll get the bits we need to sort that out and then we'll be right back and uh, we'll do that so back in a sec right let's see what we can do about sorting these tears out um, first thing I've, is I've got a piece of this this is just a piece of pure cotton um, basically I've found best to use proper um, cotton rather than like a synthetic mix this is a hundred percent real cotton um, this is a piece of old linen um, that I just found um, in a charity shop and basically just cut up whenever I need a piece of um, something like this you can get it for a couple of quid from a um, charity shop um, this is absolutely ideal we'll start with the, um, the smallest of the um, damage which is this little piece up here and basically what we want to do take a piece of linen and that's the, where we basically we want to put the reinforcement in there so we don't need a very big piece about that big should do for this basically what we're going to do get my little bottle cap in there and we've got some PVA craft glue here we will put some of that in a bottle cap that'll do that's enough there we go and all I'm going to do I'll take the piece of um, then in there this is just a cheap um, like kids artist brush you get a pack of these for about a pound and they're ideal for this um, basically just paint the PVA all over one side of your patch and make sure you get it you know a really a decent covering on there and turn that round so I can do the other side like that 
so that patches don't matter too much about them little stray bits we could cut them off but they'll be perfect let's just uh, let's just neaten it up a little bit if we can just chop some of them off oh it'll be all right don't matter anyway we'll take the patch and we'll just put it over the back there smooth it on down and if you want at this point you can just take a little bit more of the PVA if you don't think you've got enough of a penetration through there just take a little bit more of the PVA and paint that on now be aware that this PVA that I've um, selected it dries clear basically and that's what you want you want a PVA which will um, which will dry clear Just rub it down with your finger if you have to. Well, basically that's it. That will do. In fact, what I'm going to do there, I'll move that up because we'll work on this um, the worst one there. I've got an old uh, an old dead lead acid battery there. I'm just going to leave that on top of it. Put some weight down on it. And we'll concentrate on this one here, which is a little bit worse because it's. Um, like I said this is actually more visible. It's actually on the where the speaker cloth is. So we'll take a piece of the linen again. We'll want a slightly bigger piece because we want to basically cover where all that damage is. We'll cut a decent sized patch. size. I'll try and make that a little bit neater. Uh, yeah. it, no one's ever going to see this so it doesn't have to be super neat but we want it reasonable. There we go. So that's the patch which is going to go over that bit of damage there. So again we'll take the uh, take the patch and we will give it a really good coating with this um, with this PVA so whatever you do if you're going to be doing this make sure you get a clear PVA not the one that dries white or else it's going to show if you use this clear one even if um, a little bit of it soaks through the front cloth which I mean isn't your intent you don't really want a lot of it to soak through because it will show At least with the um, clear one like this even if it does come through a little bit it's not really going to be visible it's not going to be noticeable there we go that's getting nice and sticky now I want this to soak in really really well right there well, in fact we'll just add a little bit more to that so we want this really as as goopy and sticky as we can there we are yeah I'm sticking I'm really sticking to that now okay lovely now make sure that that is going to be as good as it can be. <coughs> so it's all nicely laid flat and pushed down. We'll take our patch and we'll just lay that over the top. And we'll smooth that in. Like that. might just add a tiny little bit more in places just like there because that'll soak through and help lock it in place and like I did on the other one basically what I'm going to do now 
take a nice heavy weight Ooh, I've got an old flat iron here this is ideal and we'll put that on top there give it a good press down and basically that needs leaving for about 24 hours now um, the longer we leave it the better it's going to be so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to leave that on there and that on there for um, until tomorrow um, the cabinet is all done and that's where I'm going to leave it for today um, basically we've got all the parts now of the radio to a point where we can start reassembling it and um, that's what we're going to do in the next video on this we'll actually take all the parts that we've um, currently renovated and we will um, start adding them back to the cabinet and hopefully by the end of the next um, episode we'll have a fully working um, and uh, restored vintage uh, radio. Like I say, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoy this little update on the project. I know there hasn't been one on this project for a little bit of time and I do want to get it finished. So um, stay tuned for the um, next instalment on this which hopefully shouldn't be too long because now this is done. Um, as soon as this has dried off and we can probably crack on and actually get it finished. So uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching and goodbye.